We're there. We're there. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, man. We're talking about some Daniel Boone tonight, right? Oh, no, no. We've heard enough. We've heard <laughs> enough about Daniel Boone. We're about Squire. Squire Boone, right? Yeah, Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone. I, I got to tell you, there's been so, so many times people are like, when are you going to talk about Squire? When are you going to talk about Squire? Well, here we are. Here we are. Um, guy, he's overshadowed big time, isn't he? Big time, man. Way too overshadowed. He, um, uh, yeah, on, I did the same thing. Yeah, we goofed that up, didn't we? Huh? <laughs> we did. We did. <laughs> I can hear you. But he's overshadowed by, you know, big brother Daniel. You know, he's much famous. But what's really interesting is through most of the things that Daniel was known for, uh, Squire was right there with him, too. So he knew all. Yeah, he pretty much did it all. But hey, we'll catch you on the other side. Yeah, buddy. We'll see you here in just a minute. Welcome to History Nuts. I'm Russ Carson Jr., the founder of Family Tree Nuts. At Family Tree Nuts, we build family trees for people and we produce videos at historic locations and videos that help to honor your ancestors. I'm Jameson Cable, founder of the Kentucky History Podcast, where we talk about anything Kentucky history, events, people, if it has to do with Kentucky, we're going to discuss it. And we've teamed up together to bring you History Nuts. History Nuts is a live show where we talk about, you guessed it, history. Right. History seems to be less and less to people today, but we are trying to do everything we can to keep it alive. Absolutely. History is a passion of ours for sure, but it connects to you. Russ, tell us about the best part of the show. You can join in. You can comment and ask questions live. We've got a great topic today, and we know you're going to enjoy this episode of History Nuts. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, man. History Nuts. We're ready. What's the best part of the show? <laughs> you can join in. And you know, I mean, he, like uh, I think uh, who said, uh, Richard already said, hey, He's a, it's still a boon. You know about boons. Everybody knows about boons, right? We got Daniel, you got Squire, we got Rebecca. We can talk about them all, man. They're all boons. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Tons of boons, tons of boons. Um, people think we got boon on the brain sometimes, but uh, it's definitely a, uh, definitely a guy that, let's not talk about Daniel and I, man. I, maybe we shouldn't like maybe not even <laughs> mention his name. Let's just call him uh, old DB or something like that. <laughs> Because uh, poor Squire gets overshadowed, doesn't he? He gets overshadowed big time. And right here, Randy already, already says, good evening from an ancestor of Daniel Boone, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. But if he's an ancestor of Daniel, or sorry, D, D, uh, DB, he's probably an ancestor of Squire, right? So Well, he could be. Well, I mean, if he's if he's a grandson, then Squire, Squire would be his uh his, uh, his <laughs> uncle, right? We don't call him Squar tonight, Aaron. Right? So, <laughs> Squar uh, Boone. But, <laughs> but yeah, hey, make sure you guys comment. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. You know, last week's show, we could not see that we were commenting offline. I was driving down the interstate. Well, I wasn't driving, but, but uh, tonight, yeah. we're right here, and see your comments. So, hey, Scott, yeah, watching in Tennessee, yeah. buddy. Yeah, Don, Don's here watching in from Ohio. Uh, Arrington, Arrington, right? Arrington, yeah. Uh, well. we'll eventually. <laughs> Clifford, ODB, ODB. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ODB, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I wanted to mention too, as we're getting ready to rock and roll, Squire Boone has an amazing story. I mean, there is mm -hmm. so much to talk about about him. And I wanted to hit, hit, make sure I say right from the get go. This could be a two-parter. If we go long tonight, mm -hmm. we're going to cut this off and we're going to make this a two-parter, maybe a three-parter. I don't know. So make sure you guys comment, ask some questions and input. You know, we don't know everything at all, but uh, we know quite a bit about mm -hmm. Squire. Oh, Squire. And, and, you know, it's okay if you want to throw in a few boon tid tidbits. We'll, we'll post your messages up there or, or your comments up there. Uh, so we, we won't be too biased, I guess, right? <laughs> But we're here to talk about Squire. Look, look what Crystal C just said. Let's see. I never saw Squire Boone. Or I never saw Squire Boone was here carved on anything. Show oh, picture, oh. Show, show picture rock number two. Rock number two. Here we go. Uh, rock number two. There is 
Oh, Squire that's Rock Boone. One. Yeah. Rock <laughs> Two. Squire Boone, 1770. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, man. So, so I guess we better get started, huh? This is hard. Yeah, comments are rolling in, but uh, yeah, let's get started. <laughs> David said, watching from the Ville, not the Vol. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that means. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so let's talk about it. Here he, here he is. Oh, Captain Squire Boone. Yeah. Pioneer, explorer, preacher, leader. I mean, he's got it all. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, his dad's name is Squire as well, you know, and uh, um, he's born in October 1744. And uh, he's just a few weeks shy of being an entire decade younger than uh, that that other guy, Boone. So uh, yeah, we'll, show, <laughs> so. we'll show his picture real quick too. Just to, it's just go. if you didn't know, if you didn't know who he was, I mean, <laughs> right? Notice that last that last word says legend. You know, kind of, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, yeah. The legend, I, of Daniel Boone. I, I do want to say a, sh a shout out to Tom, Tom Hurt here from watching from Renfro Valley. Rockcastle County, it's where you know, born and raised. There if, you go. I didn't know yet. Pretty cool. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think uh, old, old uh, Aaron Tippins there this weekend <laughs> on <laughs> Saturday night. So, but and then Confederate Railroads there tomorrow night. I heard, but mm -hmm. anyway, I won't be there. But uh, so here we go. Ready to start talking about Squire. So, as as a young child, I think it was what about five years old or so. The fa family mm -hmm. moved. Pennsylvania. They moved to uh, Winchester, for Virginia for a short time there in the Shenandoah Valley. Then they ended up in the Yadkin. What's mm -hmm. the Yadkin? Well, it's in North Carolina. I'm going to throw up a little uh, picture here just in case uh, anybody didn't know or uh, hadn't uh, uh, seen. But at, at the Yadkin Valley is basically the Yadkin River. It's right there uh, in, in North Carolina. Um, I, I'm not the best at North Carolina geography. Um but kind of in the middle, right? Is that about, I mean, uh, a little more west? It's right, uh, right near Winston-Salem, uh, uh, Statesboro there. Wilkesboro, actually, is where they were living, you know, near there. But yeah. uh, Wilkesboro, not too very far from Boone, just on the edge of the mountains. That is a tremendous uh, area that Scots-Irish settled right in that mm -hmm. area there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and just to, to get a date, this map is, is 1770. So, okay. Uh, Pretty pretty good old one. Um, pretty accurate then. So, yeah, yes. absolutely. Uh, see, uh, Chris Carla says hello from Kansas. Patty says greetings from Shelbyville. That's Shelbyville. From We're gonna bring Shelbyville up. Yeah, uh, quite a bit, huh? So, so after he, what is he? Oh, 50, oh, he's what, real quickly, uh, Yakin is the southern end of uh, the Carolina Road. So there we go. I don't. There I, you yeah. Go. yeah, yeah. Oh, right before you get to the mountains there. So. Yeah. Passed through there uh, many, 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 many times. Um, so I get his his brother, that other guy, that older guy, DB. <laughs> he uh, he teaches him uh, woodworking skills and such. But then uh, when he's, I guess, what is he? Fifteen? Yeah, fifteen or so. He, he takes up an uh, apprenticeship. Uh, I mean, for what it's worth, I guess. Um, for um, a gunsmith, right? His yeah. uh, his cousin. Samuel, do we is, is it Samuel Boone or do we have last name for that that cousin? Yes, it is, and that's yeah, it, it, that's what's confusing about anybody's genealogy, but especially the the Boone family. Their names are completely repetitive over and over through generations. Uh, <laughs> DB and Squire also had a brother named Samuel that uh, they settled with in uh, Boone Station there in seventeen ninety. Uh, Getting ahead uh, of schedule. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, well, you, you, and you say Squire, you know, Squire is Squire Junior. Yep. dad is squire senior so uh, yep. yeah a little confusing and, and that's the thing too like the picture that we use for the thumbnail for the show some people think that that was a picture of dad some people think that's a picture of him there's a whole lot of controversy over some of this stuff. yeah there's and none. you talking that, about this one here no yeah. that one we know squire but the other one that we it's not in there but it's the one we use okay. for the thumbnail the ones in color there gotcha. some people say that is his father um i'm not exactly sure on that but uh so he goes and uh, for five years, just a little bit shy, they bring him back to North Carolina and uh, gets married. There you go. Yeah, he gets, gets married uh, to Jane Van Cleve, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Um, 
Dutch lady. And Dutch yeah. And then they end up moving back to the old, uh, the old Yadkin here. Um, another uh, quick picture. Um, but they have some kids, uh, five kids. Yes, they did have five children. Um, one of them, I think uh, Morgan was one of the first white children born in to in Kentucky. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, pretty cool. Yep. But what I think, what I liked about that before we start talking about kids, when they first got married, these young young couple here, they got a cabin in the middle of the woods. I think it was, uh, you know, between the Bear Creek or Bear Beargrass Creek, Bear Creek and uh, the Yakima mm -hmm. River, and they lived out in the middle of the sticks without civilization that's a hundred wasn't that, that wasn't yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way to treat treat your treat your lady when you um, get married you know you know i mean <laughs> well i mean well it, the reason that i thought that that was relevant was it kind of is a snapshot of how these people wanted to live when you look at yeah. the, way, the places they live, how they live for the remainder of their lives, you know, they, didn't, they weren't about living next to, you know, right in the middle of the city. <laughs> what about living next to anybody yeah. <laughs> at all? <laughs> well, I mean, when you're newlywed, do you really need anybody else? You know, so. no, 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 I don't believe you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we got a bunch of people, uh, Ray, and now, um, uh, um, uh, Somebody else here is saying that they are related to um, uh, Daniel as well. If, now, if you're related to Daniel, the ODB, you probably related to Squire as well. That's so. right. Can Squire get a second? Can he get a little <laughs> of the spotlight, you know? A little brother that nobody notices. Yeah. But, but, I, I did. Want, I was going to bring up that day. I mean, he is, if he is, you know, he's the, the younger brother. But how many brothers and si sisters do they have total? You know that right off the um, top of your head. There was eleven of them, and Squire was okay. ten. Yeah. Uh, well, so he did have kind of maybe a younger brother. Uh, I mean, well, uh, yeah. So pretty young. I, I I didn't know. I guess he was in the middle. You could say he's a little bit in the middle. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Let's see, uh, Teresa says, watching from Northern Kentucky. Greater Cincinnati Airport cell phone parking lot. Hey, cool. <laughs> Waiting on a plane or, or whatever it may be. Well, yeah. That's good. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So he's in, he, he's settled in. He's got his uh, wife. They, they're they in uh, uh, the Yadkin Valley there. They, they stay there, though, the rest of the time. Nothing else really happens. Daniel takes over and uh, overshadows Squire, right? That's yeah. That's where it starts there, and, and you know, and in 1766, you know, the uh, Daniel and well, let me back up. Game and such was starting to become depleted in the area, and because people were having 11 kids, like we just talked about, they're mm -hmm. running out of running out of space. If you know, the average family, in order to to, to have enough cattle, to have enough uh, room to grow crops, you need about 40 acres for you know a husband, wife, and some kids. So they start to run out of room, and that's what the biggest reason for the Western expansion and such. But in 1766, DB, I'm afraid to say his name. It's kind of like Voldemort. You're not supposed to say his name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, 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 he takes his brother Squire, and they go into Florida, actually. They were going to go to Florida. They are going to be snowbirds, you know, like so many others. But uh, they, they found it to be full of swamps and thickets and briars mm -hmm. and uh, thought this wasn't not, the best place to live. Not their cup of tea, man. Not their cup of tea. And they'll, they'll prove that, uh, you know, they like the trees in the wilderness, but just not the swamps. They so. were the very first gator haters. So <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say they're from Kentucky, too. So it makes, right, makes perfect sense, right? <laughs> gator haters. But... Uh, <laughs> Totally off subject there. Those people watching from around don't, don't around the country don't know what we're talking about. No, they so. probably don't know. No, but anyway, anyway, um, we do. Uh, Reagan here says uh, uh, Squire got caves named after him, and we'll get to uh, oh Squire and some caves. Most definitely, um, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, the I don't know if I shared this one. Yeah, I'm near the Yadkin Valley. Yadkin River is not far from me. Also, Boone's Hill is here in Mount Allery. Mount Airy. Airy. Squire. Again. 
<laughs> Esquire and Sarah Boone um, are buried near here in Moxville, and Boone's Cave is in, is on the Dan River. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. pretty good. Pretty good yep. information. Um, uh, Crystal says too flat. Yeah, Florida's just too flat for them. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so, but in 1767, old DB yeah. and his uh, brother Squire actually venture on an old trail and they they spend the winter on what is it the uh the left fork what what they the, the the left fork of what became middle creek and modern day floyd county kentucky so that's eastern kentucky that's up in the mountains that's up in the sticks um yeah you know at the i mean we're talking 1768 here so this is before people really knew what was going on and nothing but long hunters coming into Kentucky at this time. So that's mm -hmm. when they first came into Kentucky. So if you, if you wonder when, when D DB and uh, I can't have, I have a hard time saying it, man. <laughs> when they came into Kentucky, the first, first time it was uh, right there in Floyd County. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people don't think, don't uh, know, or, you know, um, don't uh i guess give credit for that as much as uh they, they always think the wilderness road or cumberland gap uh through there but yeah um oh ford county man one of the first places uh but they get involved in some uh, uh mm -hmm. a little bit of some skirmishes i guess so well, I, mean, I don't know what to say but uh i gotta um let me see here um well it's about they, that time the next year you know mm -hmm. they run into john finley yeah and uh, we're talking about the uh, Braddocks, right? Yep, Braddocks. Braddocks or John, John, John Finley had served with just calling Daniel Man, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> we had to go with it. Yeah. In the French and Indian War at what's known as Braddocks' defeat, Daniel did run a a wagon during that uh, that campaign. You know, that was over there near modern day Pittsburgh, about on the Monongahela there. But so. But John Finley was somebody that they that the Boones knew, and he was trustworthy. And he said, "Guys, I have been all over Kentucky. Um, I actually ran a trading post there. I'd love to take you to this amazing place called the Bluegrass." Um, you know, Daniel and Squire had spent time there in the mountains. You know, and uh, um, the thought of the Bluegrass region was something that, you know, they weren't really. Uh, it, it was almost too good to be true, you know. So, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hey, look, we got a new, uh, new. Well, we got a few people here. We got some people watching from Florida. So we we shouted out Florida earlier, uh, and then we got somebody from uh, Texas as well. But man, we got we, we're going across the globe here, man. We got somebody from Sydney, Australia, first time here. Well, thanks for uh, joining us, yeah. uh, Sarah. Um, I wonder if Sarah has any relatives, uh, if she's related to the Boons too. So maybe Squire Boone is who we're talking about, though. Not right, not Daniel. right. <laughs> and Boone. and uh, right, right across, right up in your alley, man. Uh, greetings from Madison County, Kentucky, Rebecca. Yeah, so, hey, Rebecca, uh, Twitty's Fort. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about Twitty's Fort in a minute, and that is as a crow flies. I don't think it's two miles from where I'm sitting right now. <laughs> but uh, it, driving there might take five minutes, but. But yeah. yeah, so so Daniel teams up with Finley, his brother-in-law John Stewart, and three other fellas, and they head off into the bluegrass. I think it was was it was it May that they stepped off. Let's see, um, I believe so. Yeah, uh, May. We got a little. Well, I, I don't want to show the uh, picture just yet. We we need to talk a little bit more about it. Well, um, they, well. Anyway, they step off, and and this is where you can show the photo. You can show the photo. Okay. Yeah, it's that time that – no, not that one. Oh. The, the one with okay. Finley there. <laughs> oh, Finley, sorry. Right there. Yeah, <laughs> that was John Stewart. But – There we go. Yeah, yeah there, there, we go. there you go. So th that this was the time, that legendary time, where Daniel Boone first surveyed the bluegrass. Mm -hmm. um, there they are standing on top of the peak. I've got a video from on top there. Look that up. We filmed it right almost exactly a year ago. The trees were absolutely beautiful on top there. Um, look that up uh, where Daniel first surveyed the bluegrass, and we talked in great details about that. So you can take that off there. Now, the men are, you know, the men are, are, are exploring Kentucky, but they were mm -hmm. gone for so long. And it comes in November, and 
Squire started to worry about his brother and says, hey, winter's coming on. He, he got the winter provisions for his own family and even took care of Daniel's family uh, for the winter. And he's like, man, I am worried about my brother. And he got his buddy, uh, oh, Mr. Neely, and mm -hmm. they headed off to the absolute wilderness to go find Daniel and the party. Mm -hmm. No GPS, no maps. No. <laughs> Just going to hunt for brother. I mean, you know, what else can you do? And so we go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. We got, yeah, a, lot yeah, we go got ahead. a lot of comments here. Uh, uh, we got some uh, from uh, Jackson, Wyoming here. Um, yeah. Jackson Hole, uh, yeah, beautiful place. Vacation spot. Yep, yep. Uh, hello, Sarah from Versailles, Kentucky. Um, That's it, Versailles. Versailles. <laughs> That's, come on, man. Uh, let's see. Pilot's Knob, Clay City. Whew. Watch from Tennessee. Who? What about no Houston, no Houstonville there? Oh, Houston, Houston, hey, Houstonville, Kentucky. Hey, that's a Kentucky redneck. That's a <laughs> that's a right down. That's a you know, opposite side of the county for me here in Old Crab Orchard. So, not far at all. Um, oh, oh, Perry County, Perry County has joined us. And last one here, Bardstown, uh, Tommy in Bardstown. So, yeah, thanks buddy. again for joining us. Yeah, uh, we're gonna keep rolling here. We're talking about John Stewart, or no, Squire Boone yeah. going to find his brother Daniel and John Stewart. So he does find him. Now people are like, "How in the heck?" Matter of fact, a, a lady made a comment on the pre the pre post, I guess about about this mm -hmm. show. Um, she's like, "How in the heck did he find him going out in yeah. the middle of nowhere?" Now, of course, Daniel gave a detailed description of where they were going to be in the area that they were going to be heading out. But what people don't realize is this was the wilderness. There was no maps. There was no roads per se, but there was a lot of Indian trails that went through there. And this was a, you know, a popular Indian trail that, that went through there. So they were able to go that way, look for, you know, for traces. They knew where to look. And it, and, and it was some luck, too, to be able to find yeah. them. So when, uh, so when Squire and his buddy Neely, uh, Alex Neely, they, they, they do run into Daniel and they find out. They, they only see Daniel and, and his brother-in-law, John Stewart, and they had just escaped from Indians themselves. <laughs> and they had had all kinds of drama to tell them, you know. So, And, you know, about this time, John Stewart, uh, Dan Daniel and Squire's brother-in-law, he married their sister, Hannah Boone. He got separated from the group, and they never saw him again. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're going to pause ahead. – and then fast forward a little bit later, coming up the uh, when when Daniel what uh, would this be five years later? Uh, Daniel's leading the Axemen up through there on on the uh, on Boone Trace uh, up to Boonesboro, and they find John. Go ahead and show that picture there. Yeah. So the right first, here and do what? Yeah, the first white man killed in Kentucky. They. They uh, find him in the hollow of a log, and obviously it's just his bones that are there. But mm -hmm. the reason they can identify him is they can see his powder horn um, that said J.S. on it. So they knew that it was highly likely him. Um, that was yeah, in and, so. Zoe and, and, and good old Rockcastle County as well. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah, right, uh, there, right there on the river. That's right there at the Rockcastle River at Laurel. Mm -hmm. Laurel and Rockcastle come together where they found him. Yeah, so pretty interesting. Nice little bit of a uh, you know history, especially for the old home county. Um, yeah, uh, and it it is it is uh, it's so kind of compelling how they were able to find them. I mean, you know, they're wandering around here in the middle of places, and they got a you know they don't have a GPS, they don't have anything, but they're able to kind of track and and still get them up, get uh, find find where they're at. I mean, pretty I'm, impressive. I'm always amazed at how these our, our ancestors got around back then. You know. You hear about they were here, then they were there, then they were in Ohio, then they were in Indiana, then they were in Tennessee, and I'm like, man, there wasn't any. We didn't have the I-75, or you know, the <laughs> to get around here, but uh, they they managed for sure. Now, now O'Neill, uh, uh, Squire's buddy, he starts to get a little spooked. Uh, yeah. All this Indian activity, people disappearing, so he says, "Guys, I am going back." To I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I've had enough. <laughs> and. That's it. Nobody knows. Nobody ever saw him again. 
Wow. Crazy. Crazy. I mean, so many untold stories here that you could, uh, you know, just, it makes you, just makes you wonder like, you know, what happened? What, 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 you know, I mean, good chance he died, but you know, um, yeah, those fo uh, those fo yeah, here's a good comment, uh, Reagan. Those folks were in shape, no cars to make you lazy. <laughs> exactly, no TV or anything like that. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, it is so. amazing how much they were in shape. So for the the winner there of '69 and 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 into early into 1770, Daniel and his brother Squire, or I should say Squire and his brother Daniel, yeah, have a. Man, I got to tell you, that, that, what I am like envious of the life that these guys were living, you know. They were yes. truly 100% free, not, you know, not a care in the world except survival, you know. But, you know, they, they explored all over the bluegrass region. Um, they explored, uh, most of the time was around the three forks. You know, you got the North Fork, the Middle Fork, and the South Fork branches of the Kentucky River that formed there near modern-day Babel. But they were running all around uh, – Close to the bluegrass region, but uh, right there in the in the Piedmont, there, you know, in the rolling um, the hills there. But yeah, um, more comments here. Uh, Boone and his brothers were the only survivors of the first group of pioneers that entered the state. I guess they all tried to go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah. absolutely. Uh, um, so uh, I. Well, this is the Go time ahead. that Squire carved that, that those his initials. You want to show Rock those couple of Rock picks again? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Um, now, that, that is that is right. not my picture. That I, I pulled that off there. I went. I actually went over to the courthouse. The way the glare is, that's in the that's right inside the foyer, the vestibule there at the mm -hmm. Madison County Courthouse, um, where I live. And I was over there today, but you cannot get a good shot of that. The way you can't take a good picture of that. Uh, the way that the yeah. glass shines there, but show the other picture there. Yeah, this one's pretty uh, interesting too. Uh, that's the same rock, but that's in front of the courthouse uh, where it used to sit out front, and that was found down there close to uh, uh, Pilot Knob, I do believe, out Red Lick, um, out there, uh, close to the Pinnacles, uh, right before you get into Jackson, Nestle County. But um, thought yeah. that was pretty neat, you know that that, that they have that there, you know, seventeen seventy Squire Boone. So, yeah, that's that's it's really uh, how how big do you think that thing is? How much you think it weighs? Oh, I have no idea how much it weighs. It's about it's huge. four and a half. Huge. Feet yeah, <laughs> I guess it goes up to about here. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, off Mount Parkway, just east of Winchester, Kentucky. I think I'm a, not sure what that comment was about. I think um, she's about pilot knob. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Got another Carl. There's a there is a rock that I'll have a Kentucky. Oh, moved. Uh, I'll, I'll have a Ohio have been Kentucky Ohio have been arguing over for years. When the waters waters down, you can see it has. I guess uh, Cherokee writing. 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 Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty yeah, cool. yeah. That's real cool. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so this is also uh, the, the stone. This is all when they are beginning to have. A, is it Boone Station? Is that what we're? No, nope. uh, is are we, we we're not there yet. No, not there yet. But the, but but uh, during when, when the spring happens, they had so many pelts and things. Daniel said that uh, told his brother Squire. He said, "Hey man, you ought to go back, take these pelts back, check on the mm -hmm. families and stuff, and bring us some supplies. Bring us some lead bullets, gunpowder, and such." And he does that. Um, yeah. he, he, he spends, th it basically makes a three month trip. Show that picture of Squire, that, that painting of Squire. Uh, On the horseback. Yeah. Yeah. All by himself, all by his lonesome. Took him about three months. He went back home. Everybody's excited. He let uh, John Stewart's family know that uh, he, had, he had disappeared. He let the ne Mr. Neely's family know that he had disappeared mm -hmm. and got some new supplies and said, I'm going back. Now, he found them. And what's cool about that is that they picked a date. Was I think it was, was it July the 22nd? Yeah. To meet back up with um, Daniel. 1771. Mm -hmm. They were to meet at station camp. Mm -hmm. Station camp is a place today. Um, show them that uh, we've, got, we've got a couple. 
map or the sign? It's signed first, then the map, yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, Station Camp was originally, you know, an, an Indian uh, trading post. But like I said, it was right there on, a, on the main drag. Today, it's in the middle of Dagon Nowhere. Uh, if you go up there, it's in uh, Estill County, out Red Lick Road, uh, where that was. Um, but it was it was a popular spot that he would have known about. And I thought it was neat. Show him that map. Yeah, the map is really cool. Yeah, you can't see it. Just to the top of the map off of there is Richmond. Um, so if you're familiar with that area, you can see Irvin there. And well, so up, up to the left is Richmond. Yeah, so just see where it says that. Muddy Creek, you know, just above yeah. that. Um, and Joe Lick Knob, that's, uh, that, you can see that from the interstate. That was a great navigation point for those that were on Boone Trace. And, uh, you know, you see Pilot Knob. There. That's a different Pilot Knob than the one where they, the lady was talking about a minute ago, and you see Boone Gap. But Station Camp was out there. Um, that's in technically Estill County, but uh, where they come together. So mm -hmm. today, that's some back country. But yeah. that's, where, that's where they linked up. Yeah. I um, think this is a good stopping point or to get a commercial in real quick or yeah. Yeah. Tell them, tell them what your, your commercial is and I'll, and uh, yeah. So uh, it's just a quick video that, uh, well, actually it's a segment of a video that uh, we made on the Kentucky history uh, podcast about Rebecca Boone, another oh, Boone that, you know, a little overshadowed, not, right? kind of known, but yeah, very overshadowed. Um, and uh, just, you know, I'll, I'll post a comment about subscribing to the YouTube channel. If you uh, would like, Really close to a thousand, like twenty some away. So really Gotta close. Listen. Subscribe to the channel uh, for more like Kentucky history content, and you can watch the whole video there as well, um, and plenty other about Squire Boone and uh, all that stuff. Haven't done one about Daniel. I guess I probably need to, uh, but you know he gets so much attention. You know? Right, sure does. It's kind of a kind of a glory hog, but anyway. So that's that video. Talk about yours now or on the other well, Yeah, my, my video is uh, is Squire and Daniel were together and they were trying to, we're getting ready, we're, we're ready to get to there in 1773. They tried to settle and uh, Daniel Boone's son was murdered. So this is only a, a minute and a half clip of that video. You can check it out on our YouTube channel, The Murder of Daniel Boone's Son, J James. All right. First up is will be uh, Rebecca Boone. Rebecca Boone was born June 9th. 1739, near Winchester, Virginia. Her parents were Joseph and Allie Bryan. As a child, she did not receive any formal education. When she was 10, they moved to Yadkin River in North Carolina, where her grandpa had settled. She married her husband Daniel at the age of 17. The year was 1756 after his family moved to the same area. They moved to Sugar Tree Creek and lived there for 10 years. After multiple Native American attacks, they moved to Culpeper County, Virginia. Rebecca had 10 children, all of them by Daniel except one. It is believed that Jemima is the daughter of Daniel's brother, Edward. Rebecca had thought that Daniel had died in the Cherokee War. He'd been missing for either two or four years. Daniel forgave Rebecca's actions and raised Jemima as his own. She and her family moved to Kentucky in 1773, but returned to North Carolina after her eldest son died. In 1775, the family moved back to Kentucky and settled. Their hands were sliced to bits from grabbing the knives that were plunging into their bodies. Hey everybody, this is Russ from Family Tree Nuts, and I'm at the marker of the scene of Pioneer Graves of James Boone, the son of Daniel Boone and others. I'm in Lee County, Virginia, off of Highway 58, a little bit east of the Wilderness Road State Park. It's on a road that's called Noray Road or 684. And a few hundred yards down the road sits this marker. Behind the marker is a cemetery with graves of early pioneers in the area, as well as people of today. The story that I'm going to tell you is not politically correct today by any means. The story will no doubt raise questions and concerns of the word of murder. Were they intruders? Did they have it coming? all those types of things. I'm not here to tell you those kinds of stories. I'm not here to talk about those types of things. I'm here to tell you the story of how it was and what really happened. Controversy actually exists whether this is the location or it is other places around the area to including outside of modern day Stickleyville, Virginia. So often with history, there's a little bit of mystery and this story is not an exception. 
Our story begins in 1773 when Daniel Boone was finishing up a long hunt into Kentucky when he met with Captain William Russell in the Clinch River Valley. The two agreed to join groups in a venture to settle Kentucky. There you go. Bye. There you, you know, go. Good. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's uh, man, it's almost like we planned it. Uh, you know, I think um, the, the one my video mentioned uh, James as well. Uh, so, you know, pretty good job. Yeah, you had to bring up that drama about uh, Daniel Boone's kids <laughs> when he was in Ned and not <laughs> but, uh, but, hey, man, <laughs> like I said, he was on for a long time. Yeah. But, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a, an intent. Both of those are great stories. Um, you know, James mm -hmm. was murdered on there. He was, they knew the guy, they knew the Cherokee that was murdering him and, why he said, Why are you doing this? But you have, you have to see that video, that's a pretty intense video. But good, yeah. So, Daniel and Squire, or Squire and Daniel, head back home mm -hmm. uh, to North Carolina and they say, Hey, we've got to settle here. Now, if you know the history of the settlement of Kentucky, it is a daggone race, and it is amazing the mm -hmm. amount of groups that got here <laughs> right within a few weeks of each other, you know. Um, yeah. Like Harrodsburg is really just a couple of months older than uh, Boonesboro, it really weeks. And yeah, people that still hate each other today fighting over who's supposed who's to first. First. <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing is these old men, you know, that uh, like to argue about things like that. But um, so there's a mad dash. So 1773, uh, Daniel teams up with uh, William Russell there. And Squire and, you know, the mm -hmm. families and their wives and children, they, they attempt, they're going through Virginia. There was the massacre of the Russell boy and uh, Daniel's mm -hmm. son, James, was, yeah. was murdered. Uh, and Daniel wanted to pludge on, Squire wanted to pludge on, but uh, he said, we've got to turn back. Uh, this is what the Russells yeah. did. So it, it, yeah. it, it ended that attempt. Yeah. Um, Reagan here says America's first wild west, Kentucky. Yes. Yeah. It was it was, and it was it was quite wild. Uh, there we go. We got another comment here uh, my, from Angry Kentucky Redneck. My grandpa was a was a was was, was a William Russell. Awesome. Uh, yeah, they're cousins of mine. Uh, they're, they're cousins of yeah. mine. My grandmother is a Russell. That, uh, uh, oh my, Rebecca didn't hear that in history class. No, you did not. You do not hear much of this in old history <laughs> class. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. Rebecca was my <laughs> second. Hey. Cousin eight times removed. Daniel was my eighth cousin eight times removed. Cool. Very cool. Um, so that makes Squire uh, her cousin in law. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, keep it, keeping the Squire here. Uh, <laughs> Poor Squire. Um, no Squire. Yeah. So the next thing uh, that happens there in 1775, mm -hmm. we say Daniel was hired, and he was, he was hired to lead a team of 30 axemen to blaze the trail of this first settlers of the Transylvania company into Kentucky to settle the Transylvania company purchased the land uh, uh, from the Cherokee and that they didn't necessarily were able to sell. It's yeah. another story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We did a video about it. Go look at that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We did a video together, <laughs> didn't we? And yeah. so, but in those 30 men that Daniel led was Squire. Squire was with him. And that's kind of the whole point of all this is all these things that Daniel did that he's most famous for, not everything he did, obviously, but Squire was right there with him and he deserves yeah. some credit for that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one of the things that, uh, that they're doing on the way up there, they're almost to the end there. They're in modern day Madison County. Go ahead and show that picture of Twitty's Fort. Oh yeah. There you go. I'm in a different shirt there. I'm with the uh, friends mm -hmm. of Boone Trace. We did a, by the way, if you haven't seen that, we documented the entirety of Boone Trace all uh -huh. the way from the White Rocks, Martin Station, Virginia, every nook and cranny turn of Boone Trace all the way to Boonesboro. But there they are at Fort Twitty, um, yeah. sometimes spelled with an I. And mm -hmm. you, you can turn off there, there if you want to see. Well, well I, I just wanted to make a comment about the two rocks there. That one in the middle is pretty cool. The other <laughs> one, uh, a, little, a little shabby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. You know, I, you know, I got a little more gray in there. That was last summer. But uh, <laughs> but Twitty's Fort, what that is, is they were camping at night and once again, didn't post a guard. They were only about a day's journey from their destination. The Native Americans attacked. 
you know, they, they like like crazy. They they uh, they shot the first person to pass away was uh, Twitty Slave. He falls right into the fire. Uh, Twitty shot. There's gunfire everywhere. The guys are running like crazy into the woods. But uh, there's a there's a Native American that's getting ready to fall upon Captain Twitty, and his bulldog latches into that guy's neck, you know, and wears into that that Indian, you know. Which so Twitty was able to survive, but unfortunately, people are going to hate this. Native American tomahawk the bulldog killed his bulldog, but he, he did save him um, for a time. The men built a makeshift fort, which they called Twitty's Fort, that stood there for many, many years and was a navigation point. Uh, was there, yeah. but Twitty did pass away, and uh, the men did go on further um, all the way to Boonesboro the next day up Otter Creek. So. Uh, neat little side story, but the squire was there also. That's why we wanted to bring that up. Yeah, well, another one of those cases, you know, Boone was there, but guess who else was there? Squire was there as well. Uh, well, oh, squire, just not as mentioned much. And, uh, and we're going to get to this eventually, but I just want to, you know, the the whole, um, uh, you know, feels and that. I mean, I mean, when we're looking at Daniel, Daniel versus Squire, the biggest thing is one of them got a biography written about him. And that changed it all. Yeah, and we're going to talk about the guy, that too here for sure. And that, that is the, that's the biggest difference right there for sure, isn't yep. it? So, mm -hmm. um, so they got they got the Boonesboro Squire was there. He helped them build the fort right there at Boonesboro. Uh, spent that mm -hmm. first winter right there with them, and then in 1776, uh, the early on there, um, Squire goes back to North Carolina. Well, one thing I don't believe we brought it up, but this was all, you know, Richard Henderson. This is all about, you know, uh, the Transylvania Company, all that, all that was happening. Uh, he was the you know, lawyer, land speculator, politician who kind of wanted to start this Transylvania Company or Transylvania Colony and make it basically its own uh, state, which uh, kind of fell through. The whole purchase of the land was eventually nullified by the uh, Virginia state legislatures and, and all that kind of stuff. Another cut, another story did an episode about that, you know, in the previous uh, weeks or a few months ago, I think. So. Yeah. Um, y yes. But, but uh, yeah, so he goes back home in 1776. I sent you a text, James, but uh, he goes <laughs> back home in, in 1776 and he, where he goes and gets uh, uh, his family and Rebecca Boone, uh, Daniel's family and brings them back to North Carolina or brings them back to, to Boonesboro there. Uh, and that's where mm -hmm. they settle. Mm -hmm. um, he's a primitive Baptist minister. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, um, well, I, I, mean, I guess it, it, it's uh, well, he did. He, well, I don't want to jump ahead a little bit. He does something cool here in a little bit. That is a, a, a first, but uh, yeah, he's a Baptist minister. Um, uh, we, we got a few comments rolling in, in here. Whispers from the dark has to leave, but it'll catch the rest of the show. Exactly. It's good well, to point out. If you can, yeah, you can stop right now. <laughs> Watch it, finish it tomorrow. However you want to do it. This is record or it's live right now, but it'll be recorded and uploaded on both of our Facebook channels or both of our YouTube channels and our Facebook pages. So I want to make sure I let it know that it's Jameson why we do this video so late. So Jameson's fault. Uh, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, nine o'clock prime time. Were you, you watching uh, Thursday night football? Maybe is that the other? Yeah. yeah. That's the only other option. That's the only other option. Right. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Richard. Oh, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. Well, he, he, he um, he's a he's a he's a primitive Baptist minister. And one of the cool things about Squire is he pers he performs the first marriage in Kentucky. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and, yeah before, and before I forget, this is down the road here, but I went, since we're on this subject, Dan or Squat, I almost did it myself. Squire <laughs> Boone is the first person to preach a sermon in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. Um, but uh, that's um, pretty cool. That's one of those little Jeopardy. Who was the first person to preach a sermon in Louisville, Kentucky? Squire yeah. Boone was, you know, so was very, very devout in his faith. And that mm -hmm. is talked about in, in great detail here as we get deeper in this, but very, very devout. Well, so. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, you know, again, we're at that thing. A lot of people talk about Daniel, this, Daniel, that, but Squire was the first of many things in Kentucky. I mean, what, what he had the first child born in Kentucky, uh, the first uh, preacher, the first wedding, uh, you know, 
One of the first. Yeah, of, right, right. right. Of Lots of cool stuff, man. Well, a lot of more stuff coming, too. You know, we're going to we'll have to speed up here a little bit, uh, try to get this in tonight. Um, but we can we can break it in two if we get too long here. But uh, I think that we can we can trudge on. Okay, trudge on. Um, yeah. So in 1777, Squire mm-hmm. decides to move to of all places. The 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 ex the ex the <laughs> Harrodsburg. He's going yeah. to Harrodsburg, people. Yeah, I thought that was funny, you know, kind of thing. Because today, people that 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 rivalry of Harrodsburg, Boonesboro, you know, kind of thing. And then little little uh, Logan Logan Station, you know, just kind of saying, "Hey, man, you all forgot <laughs> yeah, about, about us, too, man." Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's not it's not mentioned at all. I mean, hard. but I think that's the first of what three attempts that Squire just you know tried to move there near Harrisburg, mm-hmm. and it's interesting thought you know when you look at when you study history and you look at places that were founded, where they were founded, which towns grew, which towns didn't, and things. It's real interesting to think, but it, at one time that was prime real estate where Harrisburg mm-hmm. was, and they yeah. really thought that was going to be the the, the, the catalyst yeah. of the whole region right there. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm going to throw up a little picture here of uh, Harry yeah. right there. Uh, oh, Harry. And, and, yeah, and, and another one, uh, I'll, I, um, I, I know you've done videos there as well. Uh, I did a video about James Harrod, and uh, it has, has a bit more fo- uh, b- you know, B-roll footage of the inside of the fort. So you can go check those out too. What, uh, you know, one of the good, you know, great places to go visit if you're into history and all that stuff. So Sure is. Sure is a great place for sure. Got a great museum there and a nice gift shop. But yes, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So he tries to move over there to uh, Fort Herod, and in the area, and him and his 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 buddy, they're out there trying to harvest corn, and they get attacked by three Native Americans. Squire mm-hmm. drops one. Mm-hmm. One of them drops his buddy. Now it's two against one. One, uh, not good odds. <laughs> Well, you're talking about one of them boon boys, you know. So, <laughs> and two against one, it gets in the hand to hand, it gets in the fight. Uh, Squire actually uh, um, kills him with his with his sword, and but one of one of the Native Americans hits him in the head with a tomahawk, and it leaves a scar across his forehead mm-hmm. that stays there for the rest of his life. It's very pronounced, yeah. um, and helps him down the road too by having that mm-hmm. scar. And then the other, now the third. Indian, he says, "Hey, I'm out of here, man." He ran away, you know, kind of thing. His squire had already killed two of them, so um, yeah. I think. Oh, we I think com- go ahead. Go, I was going to say we got a good comment here from Sarah. Good question. Land speculator. Uh, what does that mean? What what the land is worth, or to find for settlement? Well, kind of a little bit of both there. Uh, I would say primarily, you know, land for settlement. What the you know, kind of surveying. Surveying might be a better, uh, more common term to say is, is what they were doing. Uh, but either, either or, um, I, yeah, I don't really know as much as what the land's worth, but more so land to settle, uh, mapping out the land, uh, those sorts of things. Um, um, uh, yeah, they claim and then, land outside the English colonies. Yeah. And then two That's weeks so later after that battle, he gets, there's another daggone a skirmish and attack and Squire gets shot in the ribs, you know? Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's 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 amazing that this is this is twice now he's been injured. There's going to be a, several more here, but uh, you know that's why he gets shot in the ribs. Um, I forgot to mention too that that first wedding. Do you know who the who he married? Oh, oh, uh, um, uh, it's somebody important, um, but I can't think of it. You, you tell, tell yeah, Samuel, us. Samuel uh, Henderson, the brother, the brother uh, of Colonel Henderson, Henderson. There you go. Yeah. And uh, Elizabeth Calloway, the the sister or the daughter of uh, of uh, Colonel Calloway. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then the uh, two Cal- the other two Cal- the other two Cal- the other Calloway girl and Jemima are the ones that get mm-hmm, catch. Mm-hmm. We we can go sixteen different ways with these stories. We got to <laughs> focus on Squire. You know, yeah, Jason. Gotta- Jason does mention that all the years I picked corn without a sword. No, missing out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. I thought that was interesting, you know, with the sword there. But so, so now we're into the summer of 1778. Mm-hmm. Daniel has been kidnapped um, by the Shawnee uh, up there around Blue Licks, where they're making salt. He was adopted in the Shawnee. He escapes. Tells him, says, "Hey guys, they're getting ready to attack. 
the Ford at Boonesboro. And Squire is there. And yep. if you know about the siege of Boonesboro, uh, Blackfish says, hey, let's talk about this. Let's show a picture of Blackfish there. Yeah, we got old Blackfish. There you go. Yeah, man. That's not the best photograph, is it? No, no. Uh, it's, it's, it's a drawing, I believe. Yeah, I don't think they had the <laughs> <Yeah. old> Blackfish. <laughs> I have yeah. seen many reenactments of, with Blackfish in there, and he's always mm. the toughest looking dude. But, but yeah. Blackfish says, "Hey, let's talk about this a little bit." So, when you know about the the powwow that they had there in in the uh, uh, sycamores out outside the fort, um, that area is found today. It's a campground, and Squire's right there with him, with his brother. Mm -hmm. He says, mm -hmm. well, "Let's talk about it." You know, the the, the Shawnee want them to. Uh, um, Shawnee wanted them to surrender. Um, mm -hmm. they come back out there and they say, look, guys, we're going to fight. You know, we, we can't, we can't surrender the fort and they're about right. They're shaking hands. They're about ready to separate. And it was planned. They think, but several, like two Shawnee jumped on, on Squire's back and on Daniel's mm -hmm. back. And, uh, you know, I, I love this. The, the, the eyewitness says that Squire threw <laughs> the Indians off of him and his brother, like they were children. No, so. yeah. um, and, and that's a that's a that's pretty interesting. Like that's one thing. Like you know, size wise, I, I guess that's really I, I, you know I don't really know the size of Daniel Boone and, and, and Squire as much. You know, I, I assume just regular size. You know, I you always hear Simon Kenton being such a big oh, dude. Right. Uh, yeah, he was. You know, drunk. He was. Yeah. Drunk. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Um, you know, again, one of those moments Squire is right where Boone is, but, um, you know, yeah, not giving as much credit, not giving as much, uh, 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 uh fame there. Well, there's more of that story. You know, they're making a mad dash. They're, they're, they're shucking and jiving. You know, the Indians are firing, they're firing from the fort and trying to get back to the fort. And, uh, yeah. It's a it's a madhouse like that you know the that they uh, it's kind of a big big trick. Daniel was a Daniel was a short man. Richard just puts that up. Um, uh, but like yeah yeah they're running in there. I mean it's a madhouse. I mean uh, Simon Kenton runs out there. He's involved as well. Um, it's it's crazy. It was a crazy scene. Well, he he, he tries to get back, but the fort's locked. But he has to. He mm -hmm. finds his way over to a a trap door. So uh, you know kind of thing. So. It, 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 that's cool too. A lot of these forts had trap doors that were kind of disguised that, you know, you know about it to be able to be able to crawl inside there. And what, and you think you bring up this year of 1779, this is revolutionary war time. I mean, that, that's all going on in the East. Right. At the same time there, you know, and this is part of that, uh, the Western front. So, so in the, in the, in the, uh, in 1779, yeah, I see your message there. In 1779, um, Squire decides to move his family back to Harrodsburg again. This is a second attempt to move his, his family over there. Mm -hmm. But when he's bringing his wife up there, his wife gets shot at. And the fellow that they hired to carry all their stuff from there, if you know that area right there, Harrodsburg sat, what is that, about four or five miles, I guess, from the river. You know, you had yeah. to come up there. Yeah. So, um, But their guy got... It disappeared. The guy that was carrying their belongings mm -hmm. disappeared. So they're thinking, my gosh, here we go again. At that same time, um, in that winter was, was boom. Daniel had been tried for treason and he had enough. He decided to leave, uh, Boonesboro and he decided to make his own, his own station there at Boone station with their brother, Samuel Squire was there mm -hmm. for a short time, but then he said, I'm going to go to the falls of the Ohio. There you go. <laughs> and he moves, he moves North. Uh, again, trying to get up there. Uh, we got another comment. Boone clan known as tough fighters and having hard heads. <laughs> yeah, I'd <laughs> say so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, so it goes up north. What part of Kentucky? Uh, oh, you, you said. Um, well, they uh, went to the Falls we're getting close Ohio, to, which And we're getting becomes, close to Shelby which County. Becomes, or Shelbyville well, is what I was getting well, at. Well, he went yeah. to the Falls of Ohio first. Mm -hmm. Then he went mm -hmm. to Louisville. Then he goes to modern day Shelbyville. Now here's the thing. A lot of people don't realize that these guys, while they weren't hunting or while they were hunting, they're doing claims. They're basically carving trees and carving their initials in there. 
And a lot of these guys like the Boone family, Simon Kenton, these guys claimed hundreds of thousands of acres before it was all said and done. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it didn't work out so well for them in the long run. But one of those claims was in Shelby County. Um, Squire had been there in 1776, three years prior to this, and he took a rock and he carved his name in there and he wrote Squire Boone, 1776. And then he took red paint and painted that rock, painted it and stuck it up there on the bank on the tree there and said, hey, this is my spot. And that's the area that they went to. And that became Squire Boone Station or what, Painted Rock. Yes, uh, or Painted Stone. Painted Stone, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> painted Stone. Yeah. Show that, show those. Uh, we got a couple of pictures of that, don't we? Yeah. So he's a uh, Squire Boone Station, Painted Stone, too. Uh, two and a half, or Painted Stone, sorry, two and a half miles north of Eminence Road, thence a half mile west to site on Clear Creek. Uh, for nearly two years, only large station on the Wilderness Road between Harrodstown and the Falls of the Ohio River. Uh, ground plan found among papers of General George Rogers Clark. Disastrous attack by Indians, 1781, uh, reoccupied by the whites, first improved 1775, uh, called Squire Boone Station, I believe, was, or Painted Stone Station. Yes, yeah, Painted yeah. Stone Station. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, so there but, he is. Um, you know, he put his name on there, Painted Stone Station. At that point in time, he was made a captain of about 23 mm -hmm. men. You know, I think he had 13 families that he brought there. But they made him a captain of militia. He was also justice of the peace. And he performed several marriages there at his mm -hmm. station. I think that this place was very, very important to Squire. Yes. Yeah. Um Maybe in a way, his first little, you know, out, uh, his own outing to say that, you know, his own uh, uh, place, maybe his own, you know, separating from Daniel a little bit, his first little uh, get out. So, but yeah, but we're getting, I won't get ahead, but yeah, here in the coming events, it makes a lot more sense that he was really, uh, really close to this place or really you know, wanted it to be, be, be be there, be his, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then in April of 1781, that guy, Simon Gurdy, who's your favorite, your favorite person in history. Whoa, whoa, but, whoa, whoa. Uh, I do not like Simon Gurdy. Like, <laughs> Don't put that on me. Guys. But uh, that renegade, Simon Gurdy, um, led a, a force that would, that to attack um, uh, the, the station there. The men were out, men were outside or I guess working in the fields, he shot him down. Only one guy escaped. He got back to the fort. The men rallied. They ran outside the fort to meet them, and they were just cut down. They were just mm -hmm. absolutely cut down, including Squire Boone, who's once again – oh, I forgot. We forgot to say when he was at Boonesboro, he got shot in the shoulder, you know, kind of thing. He was trying to get back <laughs> yeah. to that was the third time that he yeah. was shot. Now, now we're on the fourth time, you know, kind of thing. He shot again. Uh, right mm -hmm. there, and Simon Gertie uh, uh, bragged about that for for quite some time, didn't he? Yeah, it took a little pride in uh, taking taking down a boon there, or not. You know, I guess he probably said he took him down, but uh, uh, you know, did not. Um, uh, you know, did not. Uh, uh, well, I mean, he, he said, just took pride in. It, I guess. Well, he said it. He uh, bragged to everybody that he made Squire Boone yeah. Squire Boone's shirt tail fly, made his shirt tail fly. Oh, Gertie, oh, yeah, Gertie, man. Gertie. <laughs> dirty dirty right so yeah man yeah well at that time he, he got boone got shot in the arm i think it was his, it was his left arm or it was his right arm it was his left. right arm and he got shot in the right side and due to the complications of the healing and the way that it was settled for the rest of squire boone's life his right arm was an shorter shorter you know an inch and a half shorter than his right arm yeah now, I, I, is that like le legit or just he couldn't stretch it out? You think that's what it was? Like he couldn't stretch it out as far? Maybe. I mean, same thing, you mm -hmm. know, I would think, yeah. you know, but, uh, the way the bone healed and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Time that he's, 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 he's shot, you know, kind of thing. So, um, mm -hmm. imagine the example that he's setting for those young guys. I want to hear it, bro. This is nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me, man. This is what uh, get, get, let's get it going. Get on your horse. It's ready. Let's roll. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, so then, and, and uh, well, we had a comment here back. I want to back up. Um, um, 
somebody posted. Uh, let me find it here. Uh, Richard said, you know, he didn't uh, he didn't have his brother with him, so he made his claim, and that's uh, that's kind of what I was getting at with the you know the, the Squire Boone Station or, got out of the but, shadow uh, for a little bit, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Pretty much from here on, the story goes they're they're pretty separate. They do cross paths, but they they they're separate here. Mm -hmm. Sarah down there in Australia is asking with land claims that the settlers have to pay the government. Um, no, that was that was the the idea is that they did not. It was you got mm -hmm. here first. You put you know for under Virginia law, if you build a house, if, a dwelling, you know which was a small mm -hmm. cabin, and you planted a crop of corn and harvested it, you could claim the land. But that didn't always work out. That that's a whole other story that got to be a on mess for sure. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, big time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then later, later in the year, old Bland Ballard. Old Bland. Check him out there. Ballard County's namesake. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a pretty interesting fella too. Absolutely. Uh, we, we got a totally. video about him, uh, his life, but yeah, his, what's his deal with Squire? How does he know Squire? Yeah. Well, you know, he's one of the guys that survived uh, the river raisin massacre later on yeah. in World 1812, but He's on his way to go find a preacher for somebody to get married. And he spots a huge force of uh, Native Americans that are on the war path. So he goes on to, to warn all the different outposts, all the different forts in there. Um, they're at, they're at uh, Painted Stone um, mm -hmm. Station there. They, they decide that things are a little bit not as safe. I want to leave. Let's, yeah, I want to head somewhere else. Let's head a little west, get to Louisville, head to Lynn Station, where there's some stronger forts, we can combine our forces and such. But they didn't have enough horses to haul everybody, so Squire had to stay behind with his family and another yep. family. Which is quite quite honorable, quite brave to say, hey, you guys go ahead, I'm going to stay right here. Um, but it actually works out for the best, at least yep. for Squire, that he does that. Yeah, that was, they were led by Alexander McKee, and Alexander McKee is an interesting fellow in history. Uh, he was an Indian agent of the British, and he was he, the funeral that he had when he finally died, he was extremely, extremely honored uh, by the, uh, the Native Americans. Uh, he was very well loved, but that was, it was led by Alexander McKee. Uh, the Hinton family, the Hinton family was the family that stayed back home with, at, the, uh, at Painted Stone Station. But the rest of the party was trying to make their way back to Lynn Station, which is near Hurstbourne. You know where Hurstbourne Parkway is there on the outskirts of Louisville there. Um, and they got attacked. Yeah. Uh, more than this attack, they got massacred. And uh, we, we'll pull the sign up here, um, known as the, the Long Run Massacre. Right. Uh, you know, uh, undoubtedly the bloodiest in early Kentucky uh, which took place in 1781, a Miami Indian party killed over 60 pioneers on route from Squire Boone's Painted Station to a safety at the hall, falls of the Ohio. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty bad little um, uh, the, you know, event for, for the settlers. Yeah, it was, and they have a reenactment of that every year that or that still happens out there. So, and now we're we're at the point now, Jameson, where I think we can probably finish up here because the stuff that we're going to mm -hmm. talk about is pretty fast. Um, yeah. if you, bear with us if you got to take off. Remember that you can watch this anytime; it'll be available forever on both of our YouTube channels. Uh, you don't have to watch this necessarily live. You can dip out, come back tomorrow. You know, come back next week and watch the rest of it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, ready to rock and roll? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So the next day, the, the next day, uh, uh, a, a colonel, I think Colonel Floyd. Or John Floyd. Yeah, Colonel John Floyd leads a team of about 300 uh, soldiers or militia uh, to go and bury the dead from the Long Run Massacre. Um, and about 17 of his men get killed. I mean, this is this is wild times, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they retreat. But then they then they go back to uh, Painted Stone Station where Squire was at and find. What do they find when they get there? Squire and his family. Hey, I was good. Yeah, they figured he would be dead, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, completely massacred, the fort burned to the ground. They didn't even mm -hmm. know what happened. So 
like yeah. you said a minute ago, was very fortunate that uh, that he stayed behind. You know, little things like that. And that, that that's one of those times where Squire, you know, really gave praise and pro, you know, of providence, you know, to his God um, thing. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool. Um, they take the remaining people there at the station and bring them back to the stronger forts in Louisville. Uh, Squire's mm-hmm. trying to recuperate, but uh, about two weeks later, he gets a little itch. <laughs> to, to go back to Harrisburg. <laughs> oh, oh, well, Squire, Squire State, he went back to his station. Yeah, 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 he goes back. Yeah, yeah. He was worried, you know, he, in the middle of the night, he left and he rides rides his horse over to his station just to see if it was burned down. Everything was, was okay. He starts to head back. He camps out near where the Long Run Massacre happened takes it, you know, sleeps for the night, wakes up bright and early like uh, everybody did back then. And Mm -hmm. what does he notice? About where he was camping camping at there. Uh, He wakes up and finds out that he was camping right by. a bunch of (laughs) crew. (laughs) Yeah. He's thinking, oh, my gosh, man. Because they said that, you know, he grabbed the bridle of those fours and held him mm-hmm. down, you know, and, and, and slept there. But had there been any kind of noise, a wonder that he escaped. That kind of another, uh, I mean, he's he's dodged he's dodged death multiple times. But again, this was pretty close, two, two times pretty close there that he, uh, you know, uh, was able to get out. Didn't, didn't get in a big battle, didn't anything big really happen. So he was able to make it. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Um, so for the next little bit, he becomes a land speculator for uh, – because he lost his station, you know. He's not the landlord yeah. of the station yeah. anymore. He becomes a land speculator for wealthy people, and these are people that are back east that they want to invest, but they do not want to go out there and fight those elements, you know. And live no, out. no. So, that's for sure. And uh, now he gets uh, elected to the Virginia legislature. He becomes oh, basically yeah. today what we would call a uh, state congressman, you know, and yeah, uh, big, big politician. You know, you know he, he did all right as one, I guess. <laughs> well, he spends a lot of time back east in Virginia, mm-hmm. and this is where he starts to plea for all of his constituents. You know, back home says, "Look, you guys are going to have to give us some daggone protection. You yeah. have to send some troops out here." Because if you're a, if you're a student of this this time period in this area, there was nonstop yeah. Indian attacks. And like K- Kentucky is still not even a state yet, not even a state. Right, right. So part of Virginia. He's making this play, and he made a big play. I mean, he had a big. You know, he still had the wounds his from his uh, uh, getting shot. His, yeah, look at me, guys. We need <laughs> yeah. some help. I'm I'm, I'm losing scar, my arm. A scar going across his forehead. You know, he's limping around. He's been shot in ribs. <laughs> You know, you know, he's he's been wounded four times at this point. You know, yeah. You know, so yeah. he, he he he. You know, it, he's very inspirational to the Virginia uh, legislature mm-hmm. to provide some militia troops for the protection. Uh, and that's when you know George Rogers Clark starts leading his troops. You know, on raids and stuff. Benjamin Logan leads raids into the you know the Chickamauga and stuff down there in the Cherokee country and things. But uh, he, but, but what's the biggest thing that he does as, when he's a state legislature? He sponsored a bill. Um, so the, uh, the a bill about um, uh, the town of Louisville. Louisville. Yeah, it, yeah. It's Louisville established. So that's pretty. That's pretty cool. I yeah, mean, he's he's the guy that establishes the biggest city in Kentucky. You know, he's the guy yeah. that's running that. So yeah, Squire was Squire was one tough son of a gun. He was, he was. was. Absolutely. So then in 1786, Squire fell into debt. Yeah, the thing that kind of catches up to Boone and Kenton and all those sorts of things is the whole land speculation, all that kind of stuff. It all kind of catches up to him. Um, And he goes in debt. Or or he has to pay his creditors, right? He thought he had more money than he did, and there's a whole lot of legal legalese stuff, you know, and people that got a better lawyer than him starts to lose his land, you know, so he goes into debt and uh, mm-hmm. he sells. So land his, is somebody important. Yeah, yeah, well, he sell, he sold his, you know, uh, painted stone station, um, buys Willis station, but he sold some land in Louisville to who? Oh, John Filson. And he is, um, 
he is a pretty uh, important person, especially to his brother Daniel, because he is a pioneer, author, and historian, but he is the one who um, wrote the biography about Daniel. So the thing is, I mean, why didn't Squire say, hey, man, write the biography about me real quick, you know? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I know he spent <laughs> some time there with Daniel and, and – uh... And he wrote that mm -hmm. wrote wrote his memoirs down there. But it went back east. Daniel became instantaneously famous. Yeah, you know, back yeah. east, he really mm -hmm. did. And and that's the that's the reason why he probably overshadows. And now Daniel did some amazing things. Absolutely, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. we talked about that. Is he a, is he a hero or a poser? You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. think Daniel got a lot of credit that he didn't. But but uh, it's pretty pretty wild stuff. Pretty amazing. So. Yeah. Tony asked what I'm drinking in that jar. 100% H2O. You know, kind of <laughs> that thing was here at the beginning. You think I drank that much moonshine? <laughs> I'll be falling on the floor there, brother. But, uh, you know, we'll think that kind of show. But, uh, yeah, Daniel and Squire said during this time period of his life, it was the high point of his life when he served in the legislature. Mm -hmm. But um, so he goes back to Fort Herod for the third time, tries to live there. And he makes a little trip up to uh, Painted Stone Fort, and he and unfortunately he finds out or Painted Stone Station finds out mm -hmm. that uh, <laughs> Kentucky H two O absolutely um, <laughs> he finds that, that that the station unfortunately was burned to the ground. His home was burned to the ground. The station was burned to the yeah. ground. And so the next year there and uh, we're, we're moving right along here. In seventeen eighty seven, he leads a team of people to go a group of families to go back and build a station back again to what it once was. Mm -hmm. And you said that was 1786. Right. All right. All right. So build the yeah. station there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and uh, yeah, now I've lost myself there too, brother. But, uh, <laughs> we got some comments there. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, Oh some, yeah, yeah. This is about well. This is about the same time that all these people kept settling on his land. This is yeah. land that he supposedly had about fifty-eight thousand acres at one time, but um, people kept settling on his land, and they had better claims than he did, and that was what the mess was over and over and over and over again with the first pioneers. They thought they had so much land, they borrowed money against that land for business ventures, mm -hmm. and then they had people living on their land that the courts sided with them. So they lose in their yeah. land and he gets ticked off and he says, you know what? Forget this. I'm leaving Kentucky forever. <laughs> That's it. I'm out of here, <laughs> but that isn't how true, but what does he head to? Well, he goes down to Mississippi. Um, he tries mm -hmm. to create a, a community down in Natchez right there at the mouth of the Yazoo river, uh, mm -hmm. right there on, on the Mississippi. But, Native American attacks, you know, it, it, it fails fairly quickly. Then he moves and, to – go ahead. I was going to say, then he, then, you know, he, move, he moves out. Um, he uh, goes to New Orleans. Yeah. Um, working to, as a gunsmith. You, you think about this, you know, when we first started, he was an apprentice to the gunsmith, um, you know, a long, long time ago. And uh, – uh, but then that uh, – the Spanish government actually, actually – um, uh, seizes everything he owns and because it I thought he was a spy so. <laughs> yeah isn't that wild because just a few yeah. years later they hire his brother that other guy odb mm -hmm. but yeah they, so he loses all of his worldly possessions and things and uh he's got nowhere to go except back home right back well home, back home. and back to where his oh. sons are at there and yeah. uh Painted stones, like bluegrass. Back in, yeah. yeah, back to the bluegrass in Shelbyville, near Shelbyville there, and oh, we he stays there a while. He leaves. He leaves again. He now he goes to Florida for a short time. He gets called on some family business to go back to Pennsylvania. I think it was 1792. Mm -hmm. He stays there till about 1795. Three years in Pennsylvania. That he's back. So yeah. this guy, he's living all over the place. He's living all over mm -hmm. central and kind of western Kentucky just a little bit. He's moving into mm -hmm. Mississippi, he moves to you know, Nolens, he moves to, to, to Florida, Florida, he moves to Pennsylvania, he's moving back to 
it's amazing that these guys moving at this time period, you know, this is even mm, before yeah. 1800. Yeah. Yeah. He, and I mean, he's getting up there in a little bit of age too. So, um, that, but he, he goes to, um, he goes back to Shelby County and he lives with his son who's mm -hmm. operating a grist mill and I'll, uh, Show a little no, gristmill. No, that's, right yeah. that's not the mill. That's a different mill. Oh, that's not. But I mean, that's a that's a mill, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a mill. Yeah, that's a mill later on down the road. We're almost there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he goes back there. Um, uh, claims a, a well, you know, strengthens it out, or straightens out his lane, lane client claims, and um, tries to, yeah, uh, or tries to, I guess you know, uh, which is a whole very very complicated mess. But then guess where he who who does he head to go hang out with? Well, in 1799, his big brother, old DB, had moved to uh, Mizzou and mm -hmm. uh, served as a commandant in the Femme Osage region there. And he decides to go out to out there in Missouri where his brother is and link up with him where he lives for there for a little bit of time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it doesn't stay that long. He gets he, he gets to this point. He's moving quite you know, every five years. He's moving somewhere or every every uh, yeah, so many years. It, yeah, absolutely. For sure. Maybe even faster than that. So uh, he moves yeah. back home again. Now he decides to uh, now he decides to move his family. He moved his sons, his four sons, his brother, Samuel, who was living with Daniel there in 1779 and, and Boone Station. They all moved to, uh, what is it, Cordion, 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 uh, mm -hmm. Indiana, uh, which is about, what? what is that, about 25 miles northwest of uh, Louisville there. But it's... I've it's, never been there. Well, know. it was rural <laughs> then, and it's rural now. Yeah. Kind of thing. So uh, the family moves over there. And what's really neat is some land that he ends up buying there in Indiana has a cave on it. Mm, yeah that cave he was on he was out hunting exploring at one time you know back in all of his journeys and he was actually being chased by indians and he fell down this cave mm -hmm. and it saved his life he was escaped from the indians and he felt there was a divine providence we've got a picture of that cave mm -hmm. um and Let's see right there. Oh, well, that's nope. the wrong one. Here, there's the cave. There's the cave. Yeah, you see that? Just yeah, imagine that's so a bunch of trees around and you run in and just drop right down in that hole. And yeah, but and, and uh, pretty much saves his life. And it, like we said before, he's a preacher and he kind of took this as a bit of a, I guess, divine intervention, if you want to say it in that sense. I mean, he really was near and dear to this cave, which is, which is, you know, uh, 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 different, different. You don't see, you find too many people saying, you know, this is a, uh, this is very, uh, this cave is very close to me. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. Uh, he said that he told his family that when he dies, he wanted to be buried inside that cave. Yeah. So, so. Uh, pretty neat, pretty neat. Um, he ends up, uh, he builds a house of stone from the, from the side of a hill there uh, that he called Traveler's Rest. We've had some other people that had homes that are named. I thought that was really appropriate that he called his house Traveler's Rest. Traveler's because Rest he's been yeah. All over the place. Traveling so much. Yeah. Um, I think you said what town it was in, uh, the, the cave. No, it's, uh, or it's outside of there. It's, it's, it's a little mm -hmm. bit, there's a, the, well, let's get let's get a uh, a little plug there. There's the caverns there. You can visit. You can go there. You can mm -hmm. see lots of different things uh, that are there. But it's definitely a tourist attraction. It's out in the country. So, um, you know, he definitely was a religious fella. Uh, he did build another mill, a grist mill and a sawmill. Now you can show the picture of the mill. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's actually the mill right there that they built. Um, He's known to carve all kinds of figures and uh, um, uh, symbols and writings and, and, and religious and even political things into the walls. And I think that uh, um, on one of the stones, uh, on the foundation of his mill, do, do you see what it says there? Uh, from here? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't I, don't you, I don't know if you knew that or not, but... It, you know, <laughs> He, he, one of the one of the quotes he put on there was my my God my life have much befriended I'll praise mm -hmm. him until my days are ended so yeah it's cool. a great snapshot of Squire Boone right there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, 
you know, the guys had all these different times. Uh, look at their uh, I-64. I yeah, you can definitely Google that for sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, that, that's definitely I'm a popular little, spot. Yeah. Yep. So he, he puts religious symbols all over his house, all over his mill and stuff there. Um, Traveler's Rest. He also establishes uh, and helps build Goshen Church, uh, which is mm -hmm. one of the first churches there in the state of Indiana, which is pretty cool. So he's, his influence is stretching on even further. Yep. And then finally on August 5th, 1815. He dies. The ripe old age of 70. I'm going to throw this gravestone right up here. Yeah, that is, well, that, yeah, that's right there above the uh, cave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tells the story about uh, how he escaped Native American mm -hmm. attacks. And it's a, that's the same stone as this one right here in the cave. Right. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, but yeah. Um, and, and he was buried. Yeah. He in was the cave. buried in the cave. And that cave. And, yes, and, and an interesting right. story is he had at the end of his life, he had kept he told his sons that he was going to be able to communicate to them after death. And he yeah. told his boys to camp out by at the mouth of the cave and he would reveal, you know, something to them. And they did, but mm -hmm. nothing ever happened from that. So yeah. I, I wonder, you know, I lost a father-in-law to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Alzheimer's dementia. And I wonder if he started to be suffering a little bit from that or yeah. you know, he had some PTSD action there. But, you know, the guy went through a whole lot. If there's anybody that has some PTSD, it'd be Squire Boone. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, but interesting uh, as well is uh, some say that uh, his remaining bones were removed to uh, across, the, across the river. Yeah, I think his brother Moses or something supposedly moved him over the river into Meade County on modern day Kentucky Fort uh, Fort Knox. Yeah, yeah. yeah so on the grounds of Fort Knox, he's some people say he's buried over there, mm -hmm. um, but that that's a big mystery right there. But I do know that people were taking pieces of his coffin, people were taking bones, and and just like. Uh, a video that I did, you, you, you might have seen it. It was released on uh, Saturday about Quantrill. Uh, William mm -hmm. Quantrill, people were taking bits and pieces of trophies and things of his body. They were taking bones and things of Squire Boone and, and things too. So I guess, uh, what was it? Was it 1976 or something like that? Uh, uh, 73, 1973. Um, they were able to uh, you know, get him a nice, uh, and I'll show the picture here. <clears throat> yeah. The people remember. that worked there at the caverns built that ca that mm -hmm. casket. That's inside the cave, and that is at the end of your tour. As you go through the caves, there you go. You can see Squire Boone's graves right there with his remains in there. Mm -hmm. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting. A uh, little bit there. Um, so yeah, I guess is that uh, is, is that about it? I mean, yeah. I mean, well, that sums it up, except the fact that, you know, Squire Boone led an amazing life, uh, mm -hmm. tons and tons of adventure. He was a warrior. He was a minister. He was a, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's kind of uh, a man's man, you know, Squire was and for a lot yeah. of reasons. And, you know, devout man of God, but he's an important person of our history and definitely a leader of such, too. But uh you know, he's overshadowed by his big brother. And it's somebody that, you know, they didn't have a TV show for Squire Boone. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Was was he even in this TV show? I never, I mean. I don't think I ever saw it. I don't, I've seen every episode, but I don't remember Squire being in there. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's a very, very strong family. And, and there's so many descendants from Squire that are out there and the other siblings of, of Daniel, too. But mm -hmm. it's, it's somebody that uh, is overshadowed by Big Brother, and I'm glad we were able to finally bring his story out there. We're going to do several more things about Squire, I know, at Family Tree Nuts, too. So, Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, very, uh, uh, I mean, you know, what, like, like you said, uh, I mean, I, I couldn't probably say it any better. Um, you know, Daniel's the known guy. He, everybody knows about him. 
uh, but along the way the whole time was squire and and the time like even when daniel left um soon after you know squire was still here but he left and then he came back a little bit here and there he, he was probably you know, i don't know for sure but i mean he was in kentucky just as much as daniel was and um uh yeah everybody gives old daniel the the nod of the cap but squire honestly was well, here just well, as much let's talk about that <clears throat> he was in he was in kentucky early early on with his brother daniel he was he went to florida with daniel he was with daniel when he tried to make an attempt to settle he was with daniel when they made fort boonesboro um he was uh he was in multiple skirmishes and battles he was with daniel when they had the siege of boonesboro um, he was with, uh, he had his own station and things that he, that he made same as you know, Daniel did in Boone station. Um, I'm really trying to find a few things that Daniel did that we really think about that Squire wasn't there with him. I guess the last 20 years of Daniel's life was in Missouri and Squire was only there for a short time, but mm -hmm. he was always there, you know? Yep. Uh, he's, he's a, He's a Kentucky founder, man, just as much as his brother is, for sure. I mean, a bunch of locations uh, helped bring people in um, and settled settled the state. Uh, uh, so, yeah. I was, I'm glad that uh, we got to uh, maybe share and honor a little bit of his legacy. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you got to add about old Squire? Anything else anybody else has to add? <laughs> we're going to make several videos about Squire. They're mm -hmm. coming up uh, out of this, so multiple things that we're going to do. So be on the lookout on for site and those sorts of things on yeah. site. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot you know, right there in Shelby, north of Shelbyville. And, and uh, mm -hmm. definitely we'll, we'll do long run massacre and, and uh, we'll also be out there at uh, uh, station camp. we got a video planned out there too. So <laughs> Michael asked how much whiskey did Squire drink? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He was a, he was a primitive Baptist, you know, and those primitive Baptists, they're pretty strict. Oh, yeah. <laughs> pretty strict uh, um yeah uh too i don't know if we mentioned but I, I know i posted in the in the comments there um subscribe to the channels uh follow us on the old, um, uh, facebook pages as well uh anything to share about mingo mingo is a uh, fictitious uh, he's not real but uh, yeah oh uh, mr ames there but uh, he's not real uh, mingo was a tribe but uh wasn't a friend they was created there but um i don't know mingo. What else to say there? Uh, great. Uh, well, we're getting a whole bunch of final comments. And great work on the stories in and around Taylorsville. Okay, yeah. Yeah, appreciate that, Ray. We got we got three more coming out from Taylorsville area, yeah. so be on the lookout for that. Need interesting subject. Look forward to it. Um, there you go. I guess it's it. Sound yeah, good? absolutely. Well, thanks for joining me on this. What do we got next week? We can oh. tell. Another big one, what, man. What tell? A big one, yeah. It's kind of related November to the same on family, right? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. November 11th. Right. So. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm thinking of November, down the, the, the one after that. Never mind. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, okay. So, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. can tell them. I don't care. All right. Well, we won't. Let's have to wait. You don't want to tell them? Okay. All right. All right. We got a big surprise November, for you. It's Veterans Yeah, just, Day. it's November 11th. You can put, the, you can put the pieces together. We have a big surprise that uh, we're going to be doing. We're real excited about it, so... Uh, but but the 18th we've got another video that uh, it's mm -hmm. kind of related to Boone's, kind of, yeah, <laughs> kind of a big deal. Not, but it's definitely yeah. a huge part of Kentucky history, so and frontier yeah. history. Yeah, yep. Brian right. Station. So that let it out there, but uh, <laughs> I guess we'll head out of here, brother. Appreciate you, man. It's a long show. Thank you for staying with us, guys. We got a lot mm -hmm. of people that are still watching with us, but uh, yeah, we appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, got a few. <laughs> is it about? <laughs> is it about Rebecca? We can yes. we can do some videos about Rebecca. So that it is about her. Yes. So. Uh, so yeah, yeah. And, and, and make sure you share this video, uh, like and subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channels, uh, send it out to everybody. Uh, um, we hope that people can. And in and, and, and the comments, like I said, uh, add, add some things that we forgot about uh, Squire Boone here tonight. So, mm -hmm. All right, man. We'll head out of here. Yeah, Appreciate you, buddy. Hope you have a spectacular weekend. I'll be in 
We will. Good luck. And, uh, have fun. Hey, hey, everybody, take care. And hey, remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. <laughs>